I'm going to call the public hearing to order, please. Uh, public hearing is on an ordinance to amend the town's adopted Lexington County Animal Control Ordinance. Anybody would like to speak on this, please come forward and state your name. second public hearing on the ordinance to rezone three parcels of property along West Columbia Avenue from R3 multiple family residential to C2 transitional commercial Lexington County tax map numbers 007020 20 0 anybody want to Speak of the rezoning of that property. Please step forward. Is this one of those cases when silence is killing? Mm -hmm. Then we'll close that part of the public hearing too, and we will uh, go into the regular council meeting. Uh, Reverend Simpkins, please, sir. Would you do me the favor of uh, uh, giving us the indication? Absolutely. <clears throat> Let us bow. <clears throat> Eternal God, we're so grateful tonight, Lord God, for the favor that you've shown our community and our citizens, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings, Lord, that you spread throughout the land, oh God, as the elements, Lord God, would take hold, Lord God, of our, our space, Lord God, you. You blessed us in spite of, Lord God, because you are the God of all, all the earth, Lord, and the elements, the wind, and the rain, Lord, obeys your command, and we give you glory tonight. Come into our midst, Lord God, and be for us, Lord, everything that we need you to be. God, guide our hearts and guide our minds, and Lord, guide our tongues, God, that we might put our heads together, God and make the best decisions that we can possibly make for the betterment of our community and the citizens that we serve. We give you the praise. You're deserving, Lord God, of all of it. It all belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You all receive the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? I send it. Motion for Rachel. Second. No second. Second. Second for me. Discussion? District one? District 1 votes yes. District 2. District 2 votes no. Actually, District 3, excuse me. 3. Sorry, I've got numbers to jump all over the place tonight. No, Steve, District 3 is no? No. Okay. District 4? District 4 votes yes. District 7? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, minutes from the August 14th regular council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? I say move. Motion from Rachel. I hear a second. 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 Charles, any discussion? District 1? District 1 votes yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? District 4 votes yes. District 7? Yes. And, yes. And the minutes from the August 28th uh, council work session, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Cool. Motion from Charles. Is there a second? A second. Second from Rachel. Thank you. Discussion? District 1? District 1 votes yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? District 4 votes yes. District 7? Yes. And oh, yes. Excuse me. Next council meeting will be October 9th. And uh, Central Midlands. Okay. Um, attended the Central Midlands board meeting on August 24th. 
there were three main topics that were discussed at this meeting. Uh, one was an amendment to the COGS 208 plan for the expansion of the city of Columbia wastewater treatment plant from 60 million gallons per day to 80 million gallons per day. Uh, EPAC had previously met and recommended that the board approve this project. Um, City of Columbia's reasoning for the expansion is that it's necessary to prepare for the uh, anticipated growth in that region. Um, they're expecting um, to need this extra capacity by 2035, but they wanted to go ahead and get approval by the COG so they could start the planning, design, and permitting for this, which will take quite a while. The second thing was a, uh, and the board did unanimously <coughs> approve that. They also unanimously approved a resolution to adopt uh, the code's MPO title six and environmental justice plan. This was just to, uh, this was just some language to update that plan, um, a few minor changes. The last item that the board unanimously approved was the adoption of the uh, Coates Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Plan. Um, this plan was that simply stating that they would give challenged businesses more opportunities to, to be able to bid on projects and to be made more aware of those projects, small businesses um, and any other businesses that are deemed disadvantaged. Uh, received an update from Executive Director Ben Malding um, on upcoming census initiatives. Uh, that a few council appointees, and that was pretty much it for COG. Okay, and Bob's not here about EPAC and Joint Water. You said he's been he, he, up by the Red Cross? He's uh, been held up by Red Cross on the hurricane stuff, but he did let me know that there was, there's been no meeting for Joint Municipal or EPAC since our last meeting. Cool. And Chamber of Commerce. Okay, Chamber, um, Mike sent me an update just a little bit ago. They're having their board meeting tonight, so he was unable to attend. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, the Fall Fashion Show will be October 26th at Southern Occasions. Um, the Chamber just had its annual auction, and it was a success. They had 16 sponsors, around 75 items. Um, that they did a live auction on. Uh, they had the Dream Catchers Talent Show. They had the two winners, and I believe uh, we've been receiving some emails about the possibility of those two uh, winners from the chamber opening our next council meeting uh, singing a song. Uh, let's see. Arts on the Ridge will be participating in the Towns Fall Festival, which I'll get on in just a little bit, as well as the Dream Catchers. The Ministerial Alliance held its back to school praise and prayer service on Sunday, August 20th at the Haynes Auditorium. It had scripture, prayer, singing, and music by John Neese and Lewis Rogers. All teachers in the district received a letter from the Ministerial Alliance welcoming them back, thanking them for their service, and praying for a safe and productive year. Business will be the second reading of the ordinance to amend the town's adopted election and county animal control ordinance. Do I hear a motion to adopt? I so move. Motion for Charles. Any discussion? Madam Mayor, we do have Miss Wilkerson back this month. Uh, she she heard the questions last time. She did a little bit of research and she wanted to come back and share a little information. Great. Uh, my name is Denise Wilkinson. I'm the CEO of Palmetto Life Fund. And at the last meeting, we were asked for some data from uh, Lexington County as, as well as Palmetto Life Fund. I don't believe Lexington County is able to provide that data for you, but they have made some changes. So going forward, they can tell you how many cats and how many dogs they take into their um, animal control shelter. But I wanted to let you know that Palmetto Lifeline, since we opened our facility in um, 2012, we have provided 1,417 low-cost surgeries for residents in Leesville and Batesburg. 
So we're really proud of that. On, aver on average, we perform about 131 surgeries for cats, 105 surgeries for dogs. Um, we expect that you will not be sending a lot of cats to Lexington County once this ordinance uh, is in effect, and that will be October 1st. Um, we're going to focus on TNR. I have hired a community cat coordinator that will be working in your community, so the calls will come to our organization first. We will assist with traps. We will also assist uh, by sending out professional trappers when you have a large colony. We consider a large colony 10 or more um, cats. Uh, we've already spoken with Rhonda Holloman for your recommendation at your local um, animal clinic. We are going to be partnering with them as well. I know someone had said, could we partner with them on surgeries? I just wanted to let you know that a lot of private clinics only perform four to six surgeries a day. We do 42 surgeries a day on average. And you just can't have an appointment for a community cat. You have to bring them in when you trap them. And a lot of clinics are not prepared to just have drop-offs, but we are continuing conversations with them. They have agreed to help us with um, critically injured community cats or ferals. Um, so I'm really excited about that partnership. I wanted to make sure that you knew that we did follow up. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to thank Sergeant Amanda Alexander she brought us a cat that was hit in your um, town by a car. She found it in the middle of the road, brought it to us. Um, we have named him Franklin. He was about eight years of age. We have performed three surgeries. Um, he has a fourth surgery for a broken leg. No charge to your community. Um, and uh, we will continue to take care of that cat as well as any other cat that comes to us. We do ask that your residents, please, if they have a cat issue, that they call us first before you call Lexington County because we want to try and help you. Last year, Lexington County euthanized 76% of all the cats that entered their shelter, and we want life for all of our companion pets. Um, they have limited resources, limit, limited staff, and so we prefer to be the first one in contact um, since we are their official partner. We're there to assist all of the communities in Lexington County. So I just wanted to follow up. I want to answer any questions that you may have about the program. I know it sounds a little weird, TNR, but it does work. Um, and is recognized uh, nationwide as the way to address the overpopulation issue of cats. Will the cat that was brought in to you be put up for adoption? It will. It's, you know, after we do that fourth surgery, fortunately we have a vet that's fostering it because it, it's got a lot of rehab that we have to, um, put it through before we can do the additional surgery. And that, I mean, you know, that cat's going to cost quite a bit of money, but once they come to Paul Little Lifeline, we do everything to give them life. Cats, dogs, primarily, occasionally a horse, a donkey. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a chicken, inherited chickens. So, um, any questions? Do you all still have funds available uh, still this year for services? Oh, we do. We have grants available, and we have a number of uh, very large pending grants. We partner with PetSmart and Petco. We should know in October we have a $100,000 grant that we've applied for with PetSmart and a $305,000 grant with Petco, and it's for cats only, and it will primarily focus on Lexington County. I want to thank you for what you do. Thank, thank you, you for coming. Thank, thank you very much. Any further discussion? <coughs> District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes no. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. And yes. Uh, second reading on the ordinance to rezone three parcels of property along West Columbia Avenue from R3 multiple family residential to C2 transitional commercial. Lexington County tax map numbers again 0070201 0070201 0070025 0001 do I hear a motion to uh, resume? I so move. Second. Motion from Rachel, second from Charles. Any discussion? Trish, you got anything to add? Don't I see you hiding back there? <laughs> I am. We've been through this, so I didn't know if there's anything you needed to add to it. <coughs> well, did anyone have any specific questions? Okay, 
give some insight if there were some specific questions that anyone had any questions or concerns. Pat, can you just review uh, the number of residents that are included in this uh, portion of rezoning? There are actually no residents. No. Because the property that Ms. Laura Sheila Davis has her business in, it isn't included, but it's being utilized as a business. She has two parcels that she would like to sell for small businesses, and the other parcel is the school district. And the school district had to be involved because Ms. Laura Sheila Davis Davis was thinking of including her business, but with just the two parcels that are within the rezoning request, it was a total of, I know it wasn't two acres, it was 1.02 acres, so the school district property is included to make up the two acres district, I mean, difference, because of course you can't rezone any properties without the two acre requirement. And then the school district just felt, in. If there was ever a need for them because they are in a residential district, if they wanted to utilize the property for something else such as a vocational school or a library, or if the school district for some reason were to vacate the property, then there would be the option for other types of smaller businesses. Because the building, the only thing that the building could basically be used for residential is maybe a apartment complex, but even as it's currently zoned, it could not be used as a multi-apartment, but with the C2 zoning, it could. Any other questions? It would basically be advantageous because it's right on number one highway, and with the C2 zoning, is really the perfect location to have property rezoned from the residential to the C2. But you wouldn't have to worry about anything like a supermarket, a gas station, any large commercial because it's not C1, it's C2. I think part of the original master plan was follow that so either be C1 or C2. Exactly. And one is the other. Thank you, ma'am. All right. District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, new business is a resolution adopting the town of Batesburg Leesville Strategic Plan. We've been over the strategic plan now several times in work sessions, so it's uh, time to formalize this. Ted, you got anything to add to it very quickly? No, ma'am. Uh, Anybody got any questions? Has it been posted on the website? Not until, we, not until, not until we, we will have it on there tomorrow. I need a motion to adopt the resolution. I'm sorry. I'm going to add that in there. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adopt? I make a motion that we adopt. <clears throat> a second. Rachel and second by Maggie. Any more discussion? Uh, District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. I vote yes. Uh, discussion regarding the removal of Council District 1 from the November 7th, 2017 election ballot. Uh, because only one candidate is filing for the council district seat. I was contacted along with Ted by Dean Krebs with the election commission that um, because of our form of election, if there's only one candidate filing and in a 14 day waiting period, there are no write-in candidates filing. Uh, council has the right to remove the candidate from the ballot, uh, automatically filling the seat, I guess, um, since there is no opposition. Uh, any discussion on that? Don't we need to vote on that? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, ma'am. To take it off, right? Yes. Motion to adopt. Okay. So Charles made a motion to remove the uh, that candidate from the ballot. Is that correct? Correct. Right. To uh, right. All right. There's a second. I second. Second for Rachel. Any discussion? 
District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes no. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Now, the first reading on the ordinance amending the town's employee policy and procedure manual. Again, we go back to the work session. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry, I get ahead of myself. Um, but through this thoroughly in work session, so you got anything you need to add? No, ma'am. We we took the work session notes that we had and the feedback, and we went back and revised the the red line and the white paper. And Chris drafted, our attorney Spradley drafted up the ordinance to which you all got were provided in the packet. Okay. Do I hear a motion to amend the? Employee policy and procedure manual. I so move. Motion from Rachel. Is there a second? Second. Quiet second for me. She's never so quiet here. <laughs> Any discussion? District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. Now, this is where it gets a little strange. Um, in a previous meeting, we had tabled the ordinance to annex nine parcels of property along Bobcat Road, so I need a motion. We got to vote on taking it off the table so that we can then have first reading. So do I hear a motion to take that first reading of the ordinance to annex nine parcels of property along Bobcat Road off the table? I so move. Second. Second from Charles. Any discussion on that? District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. And I vote yes. Let's take it off the table. Now, it's the first reading on the ordinance to annex the nine parcels of property along Bobcat Road, which is a Ponderosa estate, the town limits of BNL in conjunction with. Um, R1 single family residential zoning. A motion to annex. So moved. Charles, is there a second? Second. Rachel. Discussion on this. How many residents are we on? Nine. These are the ones that the board has been provided to recently. District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 3. District 3 votes yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. <laughs> and uh, manager's report. Okay, got three items here. First thing, I uh, wanted to uh, let council and the public know that the fire department has received notification um, of receiving a safer grant through the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA. Uh, the grant totals $223,919. It is a four-year grant that will provide a full-time recruitment and retention officer for four years at 100%. There is no town match involved in this. This new position will have responsibilities that include um, being a fire academy instructor for our firefighters, uh, doing instruction, instructional Curriculum with Lexington School District 3 to teach Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2 courses, which are nationally certified courses, uh, and will lead a new Fire Department Explorer post to assist with future recruitment and retention of volunteers. The funding will be made available November 2017, and the search will begin for a qualified candidate to fill this role. I know that Fire Chief Hendricks is meeting with Lexington School District 3 to try and finalize a plan for, for this future curriculum and, and what roles this person will serve in the school district. <clears throat> Hurricane Irma, uh, we do feel fortunate uh, that we didn't receive any more damage around the community than what we did following Hurricane Irma. It could have been much worse had that track not turned as far left as it did. It is apparent though that we've got quite an amount quite a large amount of debris throughout the community. Our crews will be working 
tirelessly and diligently to, to get all the limbs and leaves picked up throughout town. Um, David Paget, our, our street department director, I don't believe he's here this evening, uh, he stated earlier today in our department head meeting, they're anticipating three to four weeks to get called up and get back on a normal schedule. So we are asking people to be patient with us in the limb and leaf collection, know that we will get around to your residence. It just may take a little longer than normal. I do want to thank the street department, police department, fire department, and our utility maintenance crews for their work during the storm and, and the day immediately following the storm. We dealt with uh, street lights out, which causes potential traffic issues. Um, I know the fire department had a number of different calls during the event. Uh, the, clearing the roadways by our street guys and our utility maintenance crews getting out there and getting those roads open back up. Only three roads did we have to keep them closed for any period of time due to trees being on power lines, uh, which we couldn't allow the traffic to open back up. But I also want to thank SENG. Um, I feel like considering the circumstances throughout the entire state, I think they had, did a very good job in the timeliness of getting power restored and getting out here and getting the trees off of those power lines and getting them fixed. Within a 24 hour time period, there were no more trees on the power line. So just considering everything throughout the state, felt like that was a really good response by our local SENG. Um, October 31st uh, will be the town trick or treat. Uh, we will also be having our second annual fall festival on Halloween night. This event was, was a huge success last year, and we hope to see it grow this year. There will be mazes, food, games, pumpkin carving contests, the dream catchers, and um, we mentioned the dream catchers and the, um, Arts, on the Ridge. Arts on the Ridge are partnering this year to come out and assist us with some extra games and, and to make that night fun. So we hope everybody will put it on your calendar and come out that night. Thank you much. I have a question in reference to the uh, fire department safer grant. Yes, sir. Um, now, this would mean that we would be able to hire another full-time fireman? Yes, sir. He would not be able to be a 24-on-48 a off-shift firefighter covering daily responses. It would be more of an 8-to-5 type of schedule with very specific job duties that he would have to adhere to. And how many full-time firefighters do we have currently? We currently have the chief and three paid. Three paid and chief. Well, four paid, one including the chief. So three shift firefighters, full-time shift firefighters. Okay. Uh, this money is due November. <clears throat> it says um, the search for qualified candidates. What are the qualifications? Maybe I should pose this to Chief Hendricks. And I would ask Chief Hendricks to step up. <laughs> What are the qualifications to volunteer as a uh, firefighter? Uh, there are, the only real qualification is uh, 18 years of age and a, a clean background as far as criminal and uh, driving. That's, that's the basic. And, and then we can train the individuals. Uh, so we're, we're always recruiting uh, new volunteers. So to become a volunteer, 18, of, 18 years of age and, and a clean background. Now this position, uh, is a very specific position because they do need to be a fire academy instructor uh, and I believe they're probably going to end up having to have at least five years of experience to become a certified teacher through the school district to be able to teach in the schools. That's the key component of the grant request was that they would be able to teach the course at the high school and that's going to be our main pipeline for new recruits is through that program. Uh, all of our volunteer firefighters, um, do they attend the academy go through the academy? Uh, most of the academy courses are taught regionally, uh, so most of our people have gone through like Lexington County and Saluda County. Uh, but yes, they do have certifications through the South Carolina Fire Academy. Yes, sir. Okay. But the academy proper is located in Columbia, and, and we do attend courses there. But most firefighters get them locally, and we can host those classes here. And that's one of the components. Primarily on the retention side, being able to teach those classes to the existing volunteers, help get them to our standards, uh, so it makes it easier to get those volunteers to give up their nights and weekends. 
conducting training here as opposed to having to travel. How long would it uh, anticipate the 224,000 lasting? It's for four, four years. years. Four years. Uh, it is, uh, as Mr. Luckett said, uh, the money will be made available in November. Uh, this is a 90 day recruitment period to find that person. So we're working with the school district to make sure that when we post the job, we've got the right qualifications in there, that they'll meet the state Department of Education standards, as well as being able to um, be an instructor through the fire academy. Is there a plan to uh, continue this uh, employment beyond four years? I certainly hope so. There is not a formal plan, and, and, and Teddy and I have had that discussion. There is no requirement to continue it. Um, I hope that, uh, and, and Dr. Geary did uh, float the idea that if it's a very successful program, that we might be able to work some kind of partnership, but there is no commitment at this time. There's, at the moment, it's four years, and we can hopefully prove the value. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you all anything you don't already know. If we don't have volunteer firefighters, there's no way this town could support a fully career department. This call to be uh, just through the roof. So, having a, a a good source of recruitment, bringing in young volunteer firefighters, uh, that's going to be the the lifeblood of our department moving forward. Even though this individual will be teaching, they will be available for calls yes, the, during school hours. Uh, essentially, they would. We would probably still operate 99% of our calls the way we do now. You know, if it's a medical call, if it's a lifting call, those minor uh, right. emergencies, they would not leave school for that. Uh, we we would have to work on something. If there was a, a significant fire in town, then they may be able to leave and have another teacher. But that's to be discussed with the school district. If they're the only teacher in the classroom, they may not be able to leave. So. Doesn't Lexington County and Lexington High School and their tech program have a similar position yes. already in place? The yeah, Lexington District 1 and Lexington Richmond 5 have programs, uh, Richmond 1 and 2, Aiken County. Uh, we're hoping to be able to partner with Saluda uh, as well, uh, and then maybe even Richmond Mineta, although they do have students that go all the way to Midland Valley. Uh, this would be much closer. So we're hoping to be able to do that because that would boost our numbers. Uh, they have to be 16 years of age to take the academy courses, so that limits the number of prospects in the high school just because there's only 500 students or so in the school and roughly half of that would be the 16 to 17 year olds or possibly 18 year olds. Jay, how would that partnership work? Say with Saluda, uh, Bridge Frank, they were bus kids? Yes, that, that's the way I envision it. Now that one's going to be more of a Dr. Gary question on um, how that gets done or perhaps the school board sitting behind me. Answer. But uh, that's typically the way like Lexington Richland, or Lexington District 1. Uh, if you go to Gilbert, you bus to uh, Lexington High School and, the, and one of the young firefighters at Bridge Brain we talked to during the storm at the fire. Uh, he, he's 18 and he's a, a senior at Bridge Brain Mineta. They bus all the way to Midland Valley. So he essentially is in class for two periods. It's a double block. And he's losing two other periods because he's on the bus going to class and coming back. So I would like to think that we could uh, convince them that it would be beneficial for Rich Brimmon to feed in. And that would give us more numbers because you need a good 10, 12 person class to really make it effective. Yeah, effective and worthwhile. But I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for our department to, to grow that volunteer base, to recruit good young people into the department. Will, will these classes um, give these young men or ladies um, academy training? Yes, uh, it, it is a. It will be a national certification uh, when they graduate. There are two levels. They through the school district through the state they can be a completer, and then the next level higher is actually passing the national certification. So they can complete it and graduate and get credit for it without being a nationally certified firefighter but they are eligible to take that test. But it's a very challenging test, and we have adults that sometimes don't pass them. So that is not a prerequisite for being a completer. But they can, they certainly can graduate with a, a certification in firefighter, uh, firefighter one and firefighter two, and, and go get a job in Lexington County. Well, potentially available to Louisville. We tend, we don't have that many jobs, but um, it allows them to go get jobs at other departments. They will come out with a a certification through the South Bond Fire Academy. Mm -hmm. so, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Good. Uh, I need to 
executive session for receiving legal advice of my attorney-client privilege relating to Saluda County encroachment permit and discussion of contractual matters relating to the town manager's evaluation and contract. I hear a motion to go into executive session. So Charles, is there a second? I second. Right. Discussion? District 1? District 1, but yes. Motion to uh, go back to resume uh, regular council meeting. So moved. I've got a motion for Charles. Is there a second? Second. We've got a vote on it. District 1. District 4 votes yes. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. And I vote yes. So just keep dropping. Yeah. Um, possible action by council. Is there any action from council? We need um, a motion on the third individual to serve with the mayor pro tem for um, evaluation of the town manager. I make a motion to nominate uh, Maggie Reichert. Second. Motion is second to nominate Maggie. Uh, any discussion? District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 7. Yes. And I vote yes. Wow. It's a uh, potential agenda items for the October 9th meeting. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion from Charles. Is there a second? There's a second. All right, we go home. Good night, everyone. Thank you.